going to talk just for a few minutes tonight. It's, it's kind of like a sermon, but I'm not going to preach it. We're just going to discuss it tonight a little bit. And you feel free to put, you know, say something if you want to about the age that you and I are living in. I will call it the age of Antichrist and not age of, of the Antichrist, singular, the age of Antichrist, plural, uh, the day that we're living in. And I believe that tonight. I believe we're living in a scary time. I believe we're living in a very, very dangerous time. Never been a time like the day we're living in. We're less than four years away from the end of this millennium. Not just a millennium. You think about that. You don't even know nobody or remember nobody who saw the last millennium turn over. This is, this is something. I saw on, on, on USA Today today. I didn't buy it. I'm just getting gas out here and saw it. And it said uh, they're already planning for the year 2000, the presidential race in the year 2000. It's right around the corner. I mean, we're there. I, uh, when we first started preaching, I never thought we'd be here uh, during that year. Of course, you know, it's four years away nearly, but we're, we're almost there. And uh, we're seeing things develop now as the, as the age comes to a close that we never dreamed that we'd be here to see, but we are seeing it. The stage is being set for the rapture of the church, the Antichrist to come out on the scene. And uh, the Bible tells us here in 1 John 2, look at verse number 18. Look at chapter 2 and verse 18. Little children, that's a term he uses uh, there in, in 1 John. It is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist, singular, that's the Antichrist, shall come, even now are there many Antichrist, plural, whereby we know that it is the last time. Now there lets you know, doctrinally speaking, 1 John deals with over during the tribulation or at the end time, doctrinally speaking. 1 John does. Anything on this side of Hebrews deals with the tribulation doctrinally from Hebrews on. And that's, why the, that's the reason the Bible's laid out like it is. You got the Gospels, the book of Acts, and then you got what they call Pauline epistles or church epistles, and then you got Hebrews. And if you'll notice, when you read your Bible, Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John and Jude have a different flavor to them than Ephesians, Galatians, Philippians, and Colossians. You'll notice it. You mark it down now when you read them books. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a hyper-dispensationalist. A hyper-dispensationalist will chop up the Bible so much that he says, well, nothing in Hebrews has anything to do with us and nothing in 1 Peter. I don't believe that. I believe all Scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. I believe we can preach and get a blessing out of Deuteronomy here tonight. But I believe that primarily different books in the Bible have different doctrinal places in history primarily. And, uh, and that, that thing's something you've got to get right. You've got to learn how to study the Bible and rightly divide it, or you'll be in the biggest mess you, you ever thought of. Now, 1 John says this, verse 19, talking about these antichrists, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Interesting verse, isn't it? You believe that verse? There's one honest person shaking their head no. Anybody in here believe that verse? You know all things? Do you know all things? Do you know how many square yards of carpet there are in this room? We said you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. You see what I'm telling you? You've got to learn how to read that Bible. That Bible's like a two-edged sword. You can mess yourself up and other people if you don't read it right. I, you know, I hear a man get up and preach, Bless God, it says we know all things. We know all things. Okay, how many hairs I got on my head? If you know all things. Truth is, you don't know everything. Which means this, in the Bible, listen to me, I'm not going to talk about this. Which means this, in the Bible, all, you're going to think I'm awful, all don't always mean all. Brother, Danny, you always said the Bible means what it says. Well, it does mean all, but it all don't always mean all. 
It says all means all, but all don't always mean everything. Listen to this. All don't mean everything without exception. All means everything that he's talking about in that sphere. Right? Amen. Amen. When I, uh, uh, when a man says, I know everything you ought to know about a car, he don't know, he don't know how many molecules is in it. You got to understand the context in which the word is being used. Now, can anybody else give me an example in the Bible? You think now, where the word all don't mean all without exception. It just means all on the subject that he's discussing. Anybody know another one? It's got to mean that here. It's got to mean. You have an unction, unction and from the Holy One, and you know all things. And what does that mean? That means you know everything he ne- you're supposed to know about this subject. You know it. You know everything about this subject that he's talking about. You can't just jerk out the verse and say, the Bible says we know everything. Does anybody in here believe it means you know everything without exception? I mean, I don't believe nobody in here believes that because that means you'd know exactly how far it is from here to uh, Topeka, Kansas, to the exact inch. Nobody in here knows that. Well, you don't know all things then. He's talking about everything that's having to do with this subject. Does anybody have a Bible example of that? Be careful how you read your Bible. You've got to be careful. People say, well, the Bible says... Yeah, I know. The Bible says a lot of things. And when the Bible says something, you better read the verse before it, and you better read the verse after it, and you better see who's doing the talking and who they're talking to. Ain't that right? That's right. It's a dangerous book. It's like picking up a chainsaw running. If a man knows what he's doing with it, he can do a lot of good. If he don't, he can kill somebody. And that's why with so many false religions in the world. All right, let's look. Verse 21. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it and that no lies of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. But we got a lot of them these days. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. You know who that is? Louis Farrakhan. He denies that Jesus Christ is who the Bible says he is. I got to witness to a Muslim the other day, and this is really the first one I've witnessed to in a long time. And uh, if anybody's got any literature for a Muslim, I don't know if we got any bookstore or not, I'd like to have some, because I'm going to take it to this guy. If anybody's got something or the, on the Koran or something like that. You know what he told me? He said, Danny, Danny. He said, if you look at the moon, you look at the moon. He said, the moon, scientists, scientists discovered that the moon has a crack. But the moon has a crack right down the middle. He said, you ever seen the crack? I said, I've never seen that. He said, he said you, ever, <laughs> you ever seen the crack down the middle of the moon? I said, no. He said, if you look and see the crack in the middle of the moon, you know the Quran tells the truth. I said, how's that? He said, he said Muhammad prophesied or pointed at the moon or something and it cracked. And that was proof that he was a man of God and that when our astronauts went to the moon, they found out definitely the moon was cracked in the middle. Have anybody, have you ever heard that in your life? Have you heard that, brother? <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's what I should have told him. I said, no, 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 Mataza. That's his name. I'm like, Muhammad have cracked down the middle of the head. Right. Yeah. That's what I should have said. Has anybody ever heard that the moon's cracked right down the middle? Where in the world they get that? He believes it. They believe it. He said that proves that his religion is real. Did he ask me about the soul? No, we didn't get into that. You know what he said? He said this, though. This ain't no lie. I said, uh, well, Jesus rose from the dead. He said, no, that Christian view. I said, that's right. That's Christian view. That's Bible view. He said, he said that when Jesus, Jesus was crucified on the cross and they took him down from the cross while he's still alive and they put him in, they put somebody that looked like him in the tomb and they come back and it was really him and he never did die. That's what he said. He said he never did die. And I don't know if all Muslims believe that or or, uh, or what. I don't know if anybody, does anybody in here know? 
That's what he said. He said Jesus really didn't die. They just put somebody that... He said God made that person look like him. And uh, I said, nope, you're wrong, man. He died and he rose again. And I said, that, all eternity depends on that, you know. And of course he would not believe it. He said, that's Christian view. I thought we had... Do we have any? Okay. In English? Okay. Well, anyway, that's what he said. He's a liar that denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist. Look at verse 23. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. Now, there's a clear statement showing you that the Bible and the Koran contradict each other. They cannot go together. People say, we use the Bible and we use the Koran. Well, they contradict each other. That verse says, if you don't acknowledge the Son, you ain't got God. You can't go to God except through Jesus Christ. Verse 24. He let there, that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that He hath promised us, even eternal life. Now, um, verse 26. Let's go ahead and read it. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. We're living in the age of Antichrist. Where are we tonight? Uh, the way you know where you are on, in Bible prophecy, you look at your watch, you look at your calendar. If you're traveling on a journey, you got a, a, a map. A lot of people say that they don't use a map or read a map. Now, I use a map. If I'm going somewhere... Somebody said, uh, are you going to ask that preacher to give us directions to get to New Jersey? I don't need that preacher to give us directions to New Jersey. I got a road atlas. That thing's more right than what that preacher would say. That road atlas is right. It's got the interstates on there. It's got the roads on there. If you know how to read your map, you can even figure out how far it is from one place to the other. It'll tell you how far, like from Washington, D.C. to New York City. Um, I don't know, 300 miles or something. Um, it'll tell you. Now, you know what that is? That's a map if you know how to read it. This right here is a map. This tells us where we are. You know where we are? We are right next to the coming of the Lord. Real right next to it, according to this map. The age of Aquarius began in the 60s. I remember them weird songs that people sung back, back in the early 70s even. Uh, you mean this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius? Age of Aquarius? Well, I don't even know what that's talking about. What that was, that was the new age beginning to kick in. Them mamas and papas and, and uh, I forgot who all them old people, crazy people was. Like Jefferson Airplane, huh? Who was it? Fifth Dimension. That's right. That's right. That's who sung that song. Uh, Judy was playing that when I was a little kid. <laughs> no, I, no, I, no I, you're right. I remember that. And man, they sung that song, and I'm telling you what. They, they were saying, we're getting ready to kick in. We're getting ready to kick in to a new world. And I believe that the, the satanic church began in 1966. The satanic Bible was cre uh, printed in 1969. That's when the movie Code of Ethics was done away with, 1966. Remember that I preached about it at the youth rally? They used to have a Code of Ethics for Hollywood movies. They'd done away with it in 66. Anton LaVey's pressure in San Francisco and Los Angeles. I, you know, the devil. In other words, something kicked loose in the 60s. Something, the anchor let go or, or the wires broke or something. Something went haywire in the 60s. Anybody who lived through that time period, they still refer to it as a, the sexual revolution, the moral revolution. The, I mean, it, uh, society changed. Everything changed. And that put us in what I believe is the age of Antichrist. Now, they say that a baby was born during that time that's going to rule the world. If the Antichrist is a picture, of, is a perfect replica of Jesus, then he's going to show up when he's 30 years old. If he shows up in 1999 take over the world in the year 2000, that means he was born in 69, supposedly, supposedly. You remember the movie Rosemary's Baby? All of those things were, were women who were having babies by the devil. Just like Jesus Christ was God's son, the Antichrist will be the devil's son. 
He's the son of perdition. And we, ladies and gentlemen, are living to see that time right now when they're seeing the devil's child, the devil's child, the devil's child. And everywhere you look on these old magazines, the devil caused, you know, made a woman pregnant and the devil did this and the devil did that and the devil's children are... You heard about you heard about this thing in uh, Mexico that's killing all these goats and animals and sucking their blood out. Y'all heard about that? Everybody in Mexico is going crazy over it. It's weird. There's finding dead animals everywhere with two little holes right here and all their blood gone. And I, that's some things in them UFOs getting that, buddy, because that's what they want. They do that all the time. I mean, that's my opinion. But they think it. They call it something like the devil's. Boogeyman or something. But uh, that's the day we're living in. The first man stepped foot on the moon in 1969. We see the, uh, in the first satellite in 1958. The first man in orbit in 1962. 1973, they said you can get an abortion. 1963, they put the Lord's Prayer and Bible out of our public school system. Five, six months later, our president was shot down in Dallas, Texas, and they were mourning and saying, Oh God, why'd you let this happen? The Beatles came and the new morality kicked in. Everything is just like somebody just cut the supports out from underneath our nation. Uh, they had never believed. Uh, we got a clock. We got a map. We got a calendar. We know where we're at. And what's the world looking for tonight? What's the world looking for this evening? The world this evening is looking for a leader. They are looking for a leader. Even the Clinton supporters would vote for somebody else if they had anybody else. This coming election we're going to have, you know what's going to happen if we ain't careful? We're going to fool right around. That nut's going to get voted in again. I mean, I hate to sound that disrespectful. I may respect his office, but that's what's going to happen, people. Uh, we're, we're in a mess politically. And if he carries us on into the year 2000... Uh, we're in trouble. Two years ago, you couldn't, he couldn't have got 10% of the votes. Now, all of a sudden, things are beginning to change. I don't know about Dole. I don't know Ope, uh, Ross Perot. He'll probably stick his nose in there just to divide it up and get Clinton elected again. And look, you think people have enough sense to see that. But it's just like the spirit of the devil is just working in high places in order just to set this thing up for the Antichrist. If, 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 he, if Clinton don't get elected... We, you know, God may give us a little grace. If He does, you know, we're, our time's short. Our time, your rapture is going to hit sometime soon. I, I don't know that. I'm just, you know, I'm just giving you my, my way of looking at it right now. Um, did you know in Germany in the 1920s, they went bankrupt, 1923. The German mark went, uh, was four to a dollar and went to 160 for a dollar. The German mark. Then a million to a dollar. People were using them to start fires with. They were using them for wallpaper. They were worthless. People, they had to, they saved their life savings just to eat off of. They'd bring money and baskets and just set it down. It's worthless. They had money, but it wasn't worth nothing. You listening to me? In Germany in the 1920s, they had money, but it wasn't worth nothing. You couldn't buy nothing with it. And the nation went bankrupt. And you know what they said? They said, we need somebody to get us out of this mess. And Adolf Hitler stepped out. He stepped out right at the time when Germany was looking for a leader. And brother, when he stepped out, I read a story about him one time. And I read that Adolf Hitler was a, was a uh, kind of a normal person. I mean, you know, nothing special. Until one night he went and saw some kind of movie and it stirred him up. And he went out on a mountaintop and stayed all night. And he stayed all night and all day. And they said when he come back to town, he is a different man. He got anointed. He said from then on he could just speak and people would just be drawn to him from everywhere. The devil got, I don't know what he done. He got the anointing on him. Just like God anoints a preacher and people want to hear his voice, God, uh, the devil anointed him and he pulled that crowd together. They looked for a Messiah to save them. He spoke as, uh, you know, just like something they'd never heard before. And, but I'll tell you something. A lot of people thought Hitler was, was the Antichrist. Hitler didn't have TV. He didn't have the media. He didn't have the, the satellite dishes. 
He didn't have the computerized society to put in place like what we've got now. It's all in place now. It wasn't then. They now, they now are working on a little uh, drug uh, called a peptide, which me- messes with people's mind. If you want to forget your past, you had a bad marriage or whatever, and you just want to forget everything, they can mess with your mind and make you forget it, make you remember things, messing with your mind. And the Bible says God's going to send them strong delusion. So after the rapture, there's, there's going to be no telling what kind of stuff people are going to be doing just with drugs. What is his mark? We're losing our, our identity. You are quickly becoming a number. And Ecclesiastes says a good name is better to be chosen than precious ointment. The Bible talks about names. We're losing our names nowadays. You're not a name most places. You're a number. You're a number. First thing you call, I want to call them borrow some money. Well, what's your, this number? What's your social security number? What's this number? They don't know me as Danny. They know me as uh, 244-94-6770. And they know me as 704-652-8082. Is that my phone number? Uh, uh, they know me as, uh, you know, da 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 We're losing it. Did you, have you heard... Have you heard the latest? Who was it telling me about this commercial that's on TV? I ain't seen it when I preached on this other Sunday. About the thumb. Who told me that? Was it you, Brother Jack? They say, y'all might help us, there's a commercial on TV now that's where it's got your thumbprint like that, and it shows it up there, and it says, this is the way you're going to be doing business soon. How many of you have seen that? I haven't. Uh, been watching a lot of TV since youth rally, ain't you? You didn't stay right very long. No, I don't know how long it's been on, but but uh, uh, how many? How many? What is it? Somebody describe it. And what that's saying is, for a few years, you know, we had a number. When you went to buy something, you just give me card. Now it's just your thumbprint. And they say this is what we're going to be doing. Your banking. Your groceries, and that's what's coming soon. We're being hooked up to the major computer networks around the country. I preached that Saturday night to youth rally on the Internet. This Internet thing is scary, man. When you hook into that, you're tapping in to the whole world. And the, and the, and the scary thing about it is you're not just tapping into them. They're tapping into you. And they got, they got everything on your computer they have access to. And you have access to everything on their computer. And that's that's mind-boggling. Thirty years ago, they'd have said impossible. They're, they're, use, they're doing it for pornography. They're using it for buying and selling things. For You name it. You name it. You can you can find it on the Internet. Look it up. And that's, that's just mind-boggling. That is absolutely beyond belief. But it's happening. It's happening right now. We're headed for a cashless society. Y'all seen the new $100 bills, I'm sure. A uh, lady at the bank told me one day, I was talking about them, I said, them things look like monopoly money. And she said, uh, she said, you said, we still have people that don't want to take them. If you look at it, they got that little strip in it. And if you look at it, they got that other hidden face you can just barely see. And they're saying now that they're developing things where they, somebody can just drive by your house and point a little laser gun at your house and all them strips and that money will pick up and they can tell how much money you got hid. Yeah. Ain't that wild? <laughs> I ain't going to keep it in the bank so they won't know it. Who, somebody have something to say? seen that, Marty? The lady, the, the lady at work, uh, the lady 
that works with you seen it? Her daughter. Her daughter seen it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One, two, three, four. What, like a Visa card or something like that? ATM. Oh. So you need, need them things is wicked. What does ATM mean? Automatic teller machine. Why don't I don't understand why you? Why don't you just carry your money in your pocket? Cause you'll blow it. I know why you do it. Uh, I'm just kidding. Yes, hold it. Hold it. I know, I know that the women that can push these carts through these stores at speeds of over seventy dollars an hour. <laughs> I know that for a fact. All right, the New Age movement is unbelievable. What's going on? They quote the New York Times: "Quote, we will build a new world." Somebody just told me this. I'm going to try to get the documentation. Or somebody here might even know that the sign at Mount Mitchell State Park you under, well, had something like United Nations Park underneath it and then painted over it. And that's, supposed to, that's a preacher that's putting this out uh, down in Charlotte. And I don't know if anybody knows that or can verify that. If I can find it out, I'll, I'll tell you. But what, what, what's happening, what's happening is we're seeing that, did you know they're saying now that we're going to build a, a German uh, military base here in America? And that's, that's supposedly a fact, right? What's happening is the world's mix. Everybody's mixing to become just one world thing. We're, we're erasing the boundaries of our country. And, and, and you can see that in the public school. In the public school... They're, they're, uh, they don't want to teach anything that makes America appear to be sovereign to all the other nations or superior. They think it's wrong to teach that America is a superior nation to, say, third world countries or something like that. That's ignorant. That is ignorant. They're tearing us down, building them up, so we can, we're headed for a one world government. Jesus is coming soon. Antichrist will be here. You better not get left behind. If you ever want to go on visitation, better do it tomorrow. I mean, if you ever want to sing a song, you better do it this Sunday. If you've got loved ones that are not saved, you better talk to them. weird. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of these things that they're talking about. about have y'all heard about the black helicopters flying all over the place and nobody knows where they're from? That's, that's right. It's true. I got a video on it. I ain't watched it all. Part, part of it. These things are flying around. They don't know where they come from. What they're doing here. What nation they're from. <laughs> yes, ma'am.
Well, you know, you think about this. They, the world, they're putting more and more pressure on Christians to just give in. They, when, when the rapture comes, the Christians are gone, it's going to be so easy. I think it was uh, Reno, Janet Reno or one of them, they gave the def- definition of a cult, and they said the definition of cults was people homeschooled their kids, people uh, who went to church more than uh, once a week, something like that, people who believed that the end of the world was coming. I mean, they described us to a T. <laughs> and uh, they believed that there were, every Christian belongs to a religious cult. That's right. And it's going to be a blessing to them when we're gone. And then they'll just take over. Just take over. Well, I believe we're living in the age of Antichrist, Brother Ross. It's being said. It's, the Bible said the mystery of iniquity doth already work. So it's working right now, setting the stage. We're just like counting down for the rapture. Hallelujah. That's the truth. I mentioned that day in chapel. They don't realize what an influence they are on them. Tony? looking for a leader. There's no doubt about it. And Jesus said, I am come in my Father's name. You won't receive me. If another come in his own name, him you will receive. And they will receive him. So I hope you're prayed up, paid up, confessed up, ready to go up. Because it could happen any day. Let's stand. Bow our heads for prayer. We're going to wait just a few seconds this evening. We just talked about these things. You might have felt some urgency. You might have felt, hey, buddy, if I'm going to do anything, I better get on the ball and do it. If I'm going to work in the bus route or I'm going to do anything, we're going to work while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. In our big cities, they're, all, they're passing law stuff. You can't even go on visitation in the apartment complexes. They won't let you in. You're trespassing. And we better do something while we got a chance. We better do something while we got a chance. If you're here tonight and you're not ready to meet the Lord at the rapture, if you want to come, you feel free to come. If you're here and you are ready, but you want to get on the ball and do something for God, you come. Somebody else has already come. Others, others need to come. Father, I pray God you'd do what ought to be done in our lives. Oh, Lord, help us, Lord. Be about our Father's business. 
Lord, help us not to sleep. Lord, but help us as, as others, but help us to watch and be sober. Lord, I ask you in Jesus' name that you would open our eyes and our hearts and our minds to the day that we're living in. Lord, we know we're living in a terrible, terrible, extremely wicked, ungodly time. Thanks for grace, Lord. Thank you for grace that's keeping us. Lord, we know we ain't keeping ourselves. It's your grace that's keeping us. Thank God. Hallelujah. I pray that you'd bless every person here tonight. Lord, bless that one that's struggling. Lord, he's just barely hanging on. God, I pray that you'd help them, Lord, to be strong in the Lord and the power of your might. God, I pray that you'd move upon them. Help them, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that you'd move on them, Lord, to overcome temptation and sin. Lord, I ask you, Lord, that you'd help us to be soul winners. Help us to make up our mind, God, that we're going to be a soul winner. Lord, that's all that's going to matter one day when we get to heaven. Lord, it's not going to matter uh, what house we lived in or what kind of shoes we had on. But, God, if we brought anybody with us and was an influence on them for Jesus' sake, Move on our church, Lord. Let us be a soul-winning church. Let us take somebody to heaven with us. Let us reach out and snatch that one that may be close to hell and, and tell them about Jesus. Oh, God, I pray for that man, that Muslim. Lord, that you'd give me some words to say to him. That you'd give me some literature to give to him. And God, thousands of others like him. Lord, I don't believe it's an accident that I got to talk to him. I pray that you'd help me to say something to him. I pray that you'd move in our hearts, move in our church. God, pour out your Spirit upon our hearts and lives and help us to live for you and serve you and do right. God, send revival in these last days. Lord, may we see another great move of your Spirit, Lord, before the rapture. And Lord, help us to live right and show others. God, whatever you do, we'll praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just keep playing for a minute. These are still uh, praying tonight. Just a minute, we're going to let you go and have a little fellowship before you leave. Um, we will have visitation tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock. Make you play way out. If you got babies, bring them on. We'll let some of the girls stay here and babysit. And we'll go out and tell somebody about the Lord. You want to do that? It's good weather. It's warm. Good time of year to visit. And uh, don't let it pass you by.